We want to step back and take a closer look at the law. When should police actually arrest someone they think is being unruly, and when should they simply walk away? Two guests are joining us now as part of our Chalk Talk. Uh, Angela Davis is a professor of law at the American University here in Washington, D.C., and Luke Cannon is with Washington's Fraternal Order of Police. Seeing as Tom Foreman is here as well. Tom, set this segment up, uh, what we're trying to do. If we're looking at just the law here, let's just take a citizen at his house, and here is a police officer who's been called there, as they were in this case, to talk about a crime possibly in progress. Lou, when this officer arrives, what does he need to, by procedure, do or be aware of? What are his key points? His key things, he wants to assess the situation. He wants to also be aware of the safety for himself and for everybody else in the area. Okay, so we have uh, assessing and two, safety. So he's figuring out if there's a crime and whether or not everybody is safe. Angela, what about this citizen? What should that person reasonably expect under the law in this circumstance? Well, if a police officer's been called to someone's home, and the question is, what has he been called there for? Uh, police, if a person is in their own home, a police officer doesn't have the right to come into a person's home to arrest them without a warrant, except under certain circumstances. So, they, so it they depends expect, on where the person is. So they should expect personal security and security of their home. Exactly. And to some degree, information. Um, I mean, not really information. I mean, the police officers don't really have to explain why they're there, unfortunately. But the police officers, unless there's an exception to the warrant requirement, usually, usually have to have a warrant unless the person gives them permission. Does it to come make in. any difference, Lou, if the uh, the person who's being questioned by the police officer has an attitude or is being cooperative? Should that play a role in any of this? Should it play a role? It should not play a role, but we know that it does. Everybody that we're talking about here is a human person. So that's going to cause an impact. If somebody comes at the officer with an attitude, obviously he's going to weigh that into his assessment of the situation. If, if I'm there and this is this is this person's home, Lula, why hold, hold, on one second, hold, hold on one second, because Angela, I think you disagree. And I want to turn this so, so Angela can look at the actual law here. This is what the statute says up in Massachusetts, because I know that's what you want to talk about. This is what constitutes disorderly conduct. This is sort of shorthand, but basically fighting or threatening to fight violent or tumultuous behavior reasonably likely to affect the public, whatever you're doing, and intended to cause public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm. That's what the officers are looking for. What's wrong and with that? And that's the key here. There's no law that says you can't have an attitude. That's not against the law to have an attitude. It's not. But disorderly conduct is one of those vague, broad, uh, statutes that leave the officer a lot of discretion and that's what we're talking about here police officers have tremendous discretion they don't have to arrest even if they have probable cause to believe a crime has been committed and that's the question when they use that discretion to arrest some people and not others and whether it's based on race unconsciously or not the problem here is that there's a big question about whether there was even probable cause to believe that there was a disorderly conduct charge. If you look at those words that you just turned away there, it talks about tumultuous behavior, alarming behavior, etc., in the public. And the fact that this police officer called Professor Gates out of his house, and why did he call him out of his house if you look at the very words the of his report, police report? The police report. report says Professor Gates followed him out of the house and there were eight members of the public standing on the street watching. The police report says that the police officer said, if you want to talk to me, come out of the uh, house. That's true. And report. the officer then makes a point of explaining why he called him out, saying that the acoustics in his kitchen were Fair not enough. good. I, I've looked at a lot of police reports in my life. I find that incredible that a police officer would say, you need to come outside because your acoustics in your kitchen are so bad that I need to call you out. He'd have to be in, the, in public in order to be arrested, and it certainly sounds like he was calling him out because he was angry with him for being, ca being called a racist to give him a reason to arrest him, and that's an abuse of discretion. Well, Louis, we've spoken to Barry uh, you know, many times over the mm -hmm. years. Uh, knowing what you know about this case, we know the charges of disorderly conduct were dropped against Professor Gates, but was there uh, probable cause that uh, he should have been arrested by this police officer? First of all, I wasn't on the scene, so I have to go by what I've been told. Based on everything I've been told, based on the actions, I would have to say yes, the officer had probable cause. Now, what the courts decide to do after that is something that's up to the courts, but based on what was presented and what I think everybody has heard, I do believe that the officer was fully in his rights to have 
What made it make the arrest? What made it probable to you, though? Let's say they're here at the house. They've had this confrontation. Neither one of them's happy about it. And you wouldn't be happy if somebody came to your home and said, show me ID. They're, they're standing out here now. The officer has stepped away some. He's here. There are other officers on the scene by this point. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't he just say, eh, the guy's upset. Let's get out of here. Because at this point, Mr. Gates apparently has followed him out or he's come out of the house. Mr. Gates has elevated the situation. He's been warned to quiet down. Matter of fact, he was warned twice. He was warned once, and then he said, look, the officer, I believe, pulled his cuffs out and said, I'm going to have to arrest you if you don't calm down, or words to that effect. Mr. Gates continued. At that point, it's a, it's a discretionary call, I agree, but I think that the officer used his discretion and made the right call there. Right. But I think one of the other key things here also... I know you, that's your opinion. You, you disagree. And the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts disagrees because that court has held that it's a violation of the First Amendment to use a disorderly conduct statute to arrest someone for loud uh, expressive behavior, even if it's abusive. So and we, and we know that the, the, that's not disorderly conduct. And we we got to leave it there. We, we know the charges were dropped, but the controversy continues. It's a good thing that all of us are having this conversation because you know what? We're all learning something about a very sensitive and important issue that clearly is out there from the police perspective, moment, from the, from the judicial said. perspective, from all of our perspectives. And I think that I think. The healing process went a long way to start today by the president initiating the telephone call to the parties. That's, you're absolutely right, guys. Thanks very much for both of you for coming in, Tom. Thank you.